The Chinese defense minister has warned hegemonic powers to stay out of the Asia-Pacific one day after his U.S. counterpart proffered his country's commitment to the region. External Forces Charge Admiral Dong Jun have worked with separatists to erode the prospects of peaceful reunification with Taiwan. Speaking on June 2 at the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore, ADM Dong pinned the blame for escalating tensions in Asia, whether in the Taiwan Strait or the South China Sea, on the US, without directly naming it. Anyone who dares split Taiwan from China will be crushed to pieces and destroyed. He warned. Speaking as a defense minister, I tell you frankly that we are very well prepared for any extreme scenario related to Taiwan independence, ADM Dong, a former Navy chief, said. It would be as easy as catching a turtle in a jar, nothing to sweat about, he added, using a Chinese idiom. Trying to fight the People's Liberation Army is as futile as the praying mantis that tries to block a cut with its arm. He said. China has never renounced the use of force to take back Taiwan and views the self-ruled island as its territory, a claim rejected by Taipei. The U.S. is obligated by its Taiwan Relations Act to provide the island with the arms it needs to defend itself. U.S. officials' visits and arms sales to Taiwan have angered China, which views such acts as providing tacit support for Taiwan independence. During the question-and-answer session that followed his speech, ADM Dong dwelt on Taiwan for 10 minutes, even as delegates asked questions on other matters, including China's position on Ukraine and the Middle East. Taiwan is the core of China's core interests. Since I'm asked about it, I have to answer it responsibly, he explained to the moderator, Dr. Bastian Gigerich, Chief Executive of the International Institute for Strategic Studies IISS, who interrupted him twice to nudge him to address other questions. On the broader regional security concerns, he said, we countries in the Asia-Pacific have the ability and confidence to resolve issues in our region. Our people hate to take orders from hegemonic powers or be sucked into confrontational camps. He also said, we do not allow hegemony politics to harm Asia-Pacific. We do not allow others to bring their geopolitical conflict and cold and hot wars into Asia-Pacific. We do not allow any country, any force to start wars and create chaos here. Although he did not name any country, it was an obvious allusion to the US. The Joe Biden administration has adopted a strategy of enlisting its allies and partners so that it can speak to China from a position of strength. Speaking at the same forum a day earlier, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin had stressed that the Indo-Pacific remains a priority and encouraged like-minded countries in the region to converge on security matters. The United States can be secure only if Asia is, he said. Analysts say this differing view is partly why both countries are on a path of collision. Associate Professor Alfred Wu at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy pointed out to the Straits Times that while China views the U.S. as an external force, the U.S. sees itself as part of the Asia-Pacific community as it is next to the Pacific Ocean and has many interests intertwined with Asia. As China sees the risks over Taiwan and South China Sea rising and blames the U.S. for fanning the flame, it will become more entrenched on a path of collision with the U.S., he said. ADM Dong on June 2 also spoke on the South China Sea, taking aim at a certain country that allowed the U.S. to deploy an intermediate-range missile system. It was a pointed response to Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., who on May 31 asserted his nation's territorial claims in the South China Sea that are disputed by China. The Chinese Coast Guard had in recent months used water cannon to hit at Philippine military vessels near the disputed 2nd Thomas Shoal, causing a few injuries. 
President Marcos said that if one Philippine national were to die in such conflict, he would consider it as close to an act of war. The U.S. has a mutual defense treaty with the Philippines and is obliged to go to its defense if the latter comes under attack. Mr. Austin had said on June 1, the harassment that the Philippines has faced is dangerous, plain and simple. ADM Dong turned that comment on its head, likening the Philippines' action to Pang Siai, a Chinese colloquial term to describe fraudsters who intentionally get themselves injured, so as to claim compensation. You let yourself be bumped into a car, you fall and create an impression that you are hurt, you are vulnerable. When in actual fact you violated laws and regulations, had made a premeditated move and were distorting the facts and creating trouble, he said. China has exercised sufficient restraint, but there is a limit, ADM Dong warned.